Hello, in this video I will show you how to use Chart.js in Blazor, just a basic implementation of a basic bar chart. Now I do prefer this option over D3, I did do a video on that, uh, just again a basic uh, bar chart in D3, you can look at that video and compare the implementation of both of these. Uh, uh, you'll probably notice this one is more user-friendly, it's easier to use and uh, with that it's actually, it, it does come out a bit more pretty in my opinion at least. Uh, it's easier, it's better, it's more straightforward, it's not so overcomplicated. Now there are a few tricks that you need to know to actually get it to work. It's not exactly straightforward after all, it's a JavaScript library, it's not a C-sharp library, it's not a Blazor library, it's a JavaScript library and we implement that in Blazor. I'll show you the technique that you can use to do that but this is basically uh, the Chart.js, it's uh, chartjs.org and I'll show you where to download it as well. So this is where you can download the uh, Chart.js, okay. Uh, we will be pasting both CSS and JS into a specific place, I'll show you that later. And I'll provide all these links in the description where you can also find my Blazor course and my Stripe implementation in Blazor course and some other stuff as well in the description. Do take a look at that, something interesting you might find. Now let's get to the example, this is the example, we just have the index.raiser, nothing fancy and if I click the button it generates a little bar chart, okay. Now as you can see the background color of the bars is always the same, it's sort of red, opaque red kind of a color and every border is different. Now if you go into that sort of default example that they offer on the site, it will all be different colors, but I'll get into that a bit later once we get into the code, but basically this is what we have. We have the meaning of of the stuff and that's all there is really, okay? We have the bow two, if, if we hover, we have a number, and it says numbers. This is what we insert. So this is just a basic uh, chart, uh, one bar per value, one bar per uh, range or whatever you want to call it. Um, and now we can get into Visual Studio right here. I'm going to stop it and we're going to take a look. First of all, we need to go in the index.html, okay? We go into the index.html, this is where we start implementing the library. Uh, let's go to the top and in the top we have script, new script, so this is uh, uh, just a link copied from the place I've shown you, pasted and that's it for the JS, chart.js, right, chart.js and we have chart.css as well, both of them are required obviously. Uh, so you just paste them in the index.html, right, this is the only place you can really do that in Blazor and we have it, we are good to go, move forward, right? We have also a script, now obviously this script can be in a separate script file, there's nothing wrong with that, right? It can be in a separate script file with your own preferred structure, but basically uh, we do need this uh, function, we do need some kind of a function like this, right? So that we can execute it from Blazor, from C sharp code, right? We will need to invoke a sync, invoke void a sync rather in this case because we do not return anything. So we will take a look at that, but we do need something uh, to start with, right? So this is called generate bars, this is our function and we take two arguments in it. We have data to display and then we have labels to display. Okay, data to display and labels to display. This is quite dynamic, right? We, we have, we provide the arrays from C sharp and these, mind you, are arrays, okay? These are mm, sort of matching arrays, okay? The first value will match the first label, the third value will match the third label and so on. These have to match in order for it to actually work properly. And then let's take a look at the whole arrangement. First of all, you might actually find in the documentation, you will find uh, several different arrangements for these, but this is what you have to do uh, in order to make it work on Blazor. First of all, we get the element by ID. 
okay? The element is in the index.razor or in any uh, razor file that you want, in component or page, okay? This is where our element will be. So we get element by ID. I'll show you the element uh, later. It is quite important to see that as well. But basically, we take the element and then we do new chart, okay? We don't assign it anywhere. We don't need that. Uh, you just do a new chart. You don't need to assign it anywhere because it creates it into the CTX, right? Uh, the canvas, right? The canvas. Uh, now, partially, this is from the documentation, some of this, uh, but I did have to modify a few things in order for you to uh, see how customized it can be. Uh, what are the sort of basics uh, of things that you can customize properly? So the CTX, this is what we need to do now. You have this and the chart is created into that canvas, therefore you don't need to assign it anywhere. Now, again, documentation will show you that you need to assign it and there'll be several different options you can choose from, but this is the way to go in Blazor. So you have that, the bar chart is created and this is what defines the bar chart, right? The type. Now you can enter any type you want and uh, in some cases actually this whole arrangement will work just by changing the type but it won't look good and probably some things won't be matching so uh, do be careful do look at the documentation if you want to take a look at the other ones and perhaps I'll make a few more videos about these charts uh, uh, about other types of charts and do let me know if you want to uh, perhaps find out something a bit more specific about these. Uh, so we have type, right? And then after that, we have the data, the important part. But the data is not a simple array right away. First, we have labels, okay? The data consists of several parts. We have labels, that's the labels to display array. And then we have data sets, okay? We have data sets. Now this is the first one and only, in this case, data set. And this is where we have data, again, we have data right here, but the actual data is right here. It can be a bit confusing, but uh, uh, it's all shown in the examples and the documentation as well, so it, it should be quite clear. We have data to display, which is an array. An array that, again, matches labels to display. And then we have label numbers. So this is what gets displayed. Now, the more tricky part here is the background color and the border color. Now, I can do a matching array. Again, a matching array. And you can generate these in C Sharp as well, or maybe even in JavaScript, you can run a loop and generate these. Uh, many things you can do, really. But if we do an array, each one will be different. But if we don't do an array, like we have in the background color, each bar will be of the same color, okay? So if you want each one to be different, you do an array, and if you don't, you do just a simple value. That's it. Now, this is kind of a tricky part because you won't really notice this arrangement. It's not really written about anywhere, at least nowhere that I could find, and I did look for it, but this is how it works, and that's it. So if we go deeper, uh, we have border width, okay, you can make it larger, smaller, doesn't really matter, right? And then we have options, okay, we have options right here. Now, this is by default, we won't get into that too much, okay? This is where we begin the, the whole chart, basically, and that's all there is to it. You can experiment with that, uh, or if you don't care, you don't experiment. And then we have responsive true. Now responsive true, we need to have. It helps, it helps to make the chart uh, look more perhaps beautiful. These charts are in general a bit tricky when it comes to the layout, okay? Sometimes they will fit, sometimes they won't fit, uh, but it is tricky. You have to be careful, you have to test it on multiple sizes and whatnot, and uh, it is tricky, but uh, the responsive part doesn't end here. I will show you later, once we get into the C-sharp part of it, the blazer or the page, right? But we have more options than this. We have more options than this, but I won't get into that right now. 
this is just a sort of basic introduction for you, right? You can take a look at the documentation, you can play around with them, maybe you'll find something that suits your needs. But this is basically how you insert the data, how you choose colors, and how you make it actually work. And now let's see in the index.razor, okay? So we have this chart, okay? We have this uh, chart, or rather this canvas, okay? Canvas right here, remember, test chart. Test chart is the ID we use. So in this canvas, we generate everything. But this canvas has to be wrapped into this div with chart container class, okay? Now, the reason for that is so that it can actually be responsive, so that it would fit properly. If you don't do it, uh, it will basically take up the full page. It won't resize at all. It will be kind of a mess. Okay, this does help. Okay, so you need to wrap the canvas into this class, into div of this class, but also you need to set a proper height and width. If I choose anything over 60 or 80, it will again become a bit of a mess. I find that 20 by 20 is the right size, at least for this arrangement. Now, your arrangements will be different and you can communicate this to your designer and maybe we'll find a way to make this beautiful. A good designer, a good expert of CSS can really make it happen, right? Uh, so you do need to set the height and the width, otherwise it won't really be responsive, it will be a mess. And obviously you need to wrap your canvas into this. Now, other than that, we simply have uh, a button click we have a button click, we have invo invoke as a void as sync, we have generate bars, and then we provide a couple of uh, arrays as uh, the values and the labels for the values, right? And that's it, that's all we have for it. So as you can see, it's quite straightforward and it does actually work. Now, if you want to learn more about Blazor, take a look at my course, it's not too expensive. It also doesn't take too much time to go through it and you'll really learn a lot. Also, take a look at my API development course. Uh, that might be useful to go along with the Blazor as well as the Stripe in Blazor implementation. Do subscribe to this channel and look forward for more videos like this one.